now just trying to pad his wages. Wollaston's next in action tomorrow actually he's got a China Open qualifier a best of 11 tomorrow afternoon at Barnsley against one of the most methodical players on the circuit Rod Lawler best of 11 that As for Li Hang, well, he would love to qualify for the tournament that's played in his national capital, Beijing. He takes on a fellow Chinese professional, Chen Zi. That's on Monday afternoon. The break goes to 38. The lead expands to 39. 43 on the table, so the red down the side cushion with the rest is frame ball. 38. Ooh, now then. does have a, a wee bit of latitude in terms of what colour he can pot here. Mind you, clipping the, the red in super thin with all of the accoutrements here, that's not going to be easy in itself. Now he does have to pot a colour. And in fact, to be able to win without recourse to a snooker or a respotted black, it's the brown. Nice in there. <laughs> uh, we'll get it out after the match. I don't think it'll come out. Oh dear. Here we go. Equipment malfunction. 
I think we'll do it after the match. Yeah. The extension on Lee Hang's cue is actually stuck still in the the extension there. Lee Hang what? No, he doesn't try and pop the brown because he knows that by blocking off the right hand side cushion as a form of escape for Wollaston. He's actually made this a really tough path. Really tough. Too narrow. Foul. We have four. So for a moment there, Lee Hang required a snooker. Not anymore. Now, does he have the room to squeeze the red past the black and lay another? A really good one. That works. Now Lee Hang hoping and now delighted to know that he's not left a free ball, a uh, touching ball. Had he done so, this would have been a real head scratcher. So then, Wollaston, 34 in front, but the black over the pocket. The frame is still very much salvageable. I can tell you Ricky Walden's about to win the first frame against Michael White. He's on a break of 82, so there's no way back for White. And after that, a delightful double. There's no way back for Lee Hang in the first frame here. Well, a wee morale booster for Wollaston. 13. 17. 22. Twenty-eight on the frame. Had a couple of anxious moments there after 
Lee Hang required a snooker, but in the end, Wollaston gets over the line. The double did the trick. Helped by a break of 38, the highest contribution of the frame. It's Ben Wollaston 1, Lee Hang 0. Can confirm also that Ricky Walden won that opening frame against Michael White. That's the match that Walden needs to me a book his place in the semi-finals. Even though Wollaston's only playing for pride, he has another match left after this against Graham Dodd. That's important for Dodd. And then the final group match is Lee Hang against Martin Gould. So Lee has two chances to get to the four win mark that would put him into the semi-finals. The way the, the day works, we have our semi-finals at six o'clock and then the final straight afterwards. Just a quick look in on table two where Ricky Walden has made a very satisfactory start. He's had a satisfactory week when you think about it. He was runner-up in Group 5. And now a couple of frames away from making another playoff appearance. So it's been a profitable four days here at the Rico Arena in Coventry. The way the table stands at the moment, still a lot of questions to be answered, but poor old Ben Wollaston knows his fate. You might be wondering, by the way, Who's in the winners group at the end of March? Well, I can tell you, it's a really attractive lineup already. Five players are confirmed there. Zhu Yulong won the group number one. Then Mark Selby, the world champion, was the group two champion. Groups three and four. We saw some really good snooker there. Karen Wilson and Ali Carter were the beneficiaries mainly. They were the group winners. And then here on Wednesday evening, Mark Williams booked his place in the climax of the tournament. Simple enough pot, but nice control of the cue ball. Eight. And as I said right at the start of the match, I don't think he's aware of this, Ben Wollaston. It's not exactly a, a major snooker record. It's rather niche, actually, but... The lowest number of frames won by any player in any group in Championship League history is four. He's currently won three, including the first frame of this. <clears throat> and all players want to avoid a dubious record. Sixteen. 
17. Tell you he'll be watching this with interest. It's Graham Dot because if Wollaston were to win 3 0 in particular, that would do him a, a big favour. Twenty-four. Made a really nice contact on the pink there. The intention pretty much always for these guys when they've got that kind of shot, whether they're powering into the bunch or going into them more conservatively, the intention is to hit the pink pretty much full ball. That enables the cue ball to stay in the middle of the table and it opens up the reds really nicely. Well, Wollaston knocked in the pot. Got the cannon on the pink pretty much on the nose. Well, in terms of position here, he's on the green, but this is a toughie. He's not looking to see whether the green will go. He knows full well it will. What he's looking at is whether the cue ball will career into the yellow in potting the green. I'm also 30. It was a mood point. Both things happened. He missed the ball and the kiss was made as well. Wollaston's in a Chinese snooker over the green. If I got a £10 note for every time I've been asked why they call it a Chinese snooker, I'd be a little bit richer than I am right now. But I've got no idea why it is called a Chinese snooker. When the term was first coined, snooker wasn't known in China. When you're queuing like that, you can't do an awful lot. All Williston wanted to do there was drop the cue ball on the top cushion. Didn't reach, though.
one. Good pot. Very good pot. And look at the command of the cue ball as well. Did well there to miss the green with the cue ball. No. By the way, Michael White might be on the way home. He is going to be eliminated from the tournament because he's going to finish either sixth or seventh in the group. Ten. But he's not lying down against Ricky Walden. Not by any means. Currently on a break of 85. Still going to draw level at 1-1. Didn't want the kiss on the red, didn't want the kiss like that on the pink either. By the way, White's 85 is morphed into a century. He's drawn back onto level terms in some style. Well, this time Lee is a, a very fortunate individual. He made contact with the green, and would you believe Ben Wollaston, not blessed with the best of fortune in this group, has been kicked again. Six reds left, snookered on all of them. Pictures superimposed to tell us where the cue ball was. It's a really good aid, this, not just for you, the viewer, and for myself, the commentator, but also for the referee, because he's got a, a screen in there which tells him where the ball should be, and that is absolutely on a sixpence. I think he's going to be going through the same rigmarole again. Oh, the we have four. Yeah. 
further that way. So. You might think all of this is needlessly pernickety, but it isn't. A millimetre or two can make a massive difference. Yeah. Yeah. Foul. Again! We have four. Three consecutive misses, 12 points. Yeah on Lee's side of the ledger. And now just one point, the difference. He's a very studious player, Lee Hang, and a player who's come on leaps and bounds this season. Early season, on home soil in China, reached the semi-finals of the China Championship and the quarter-finals of the World Open. In fact, he had a bona fide chance to make the final of the China Championship in the end lost 6-5 to Luca Brussel, who went on to beat Sean Murphy in the final. The China Championship being held in Guangzhou in southern China. One enormous city. Former host city, in fact, of the Asian Games not too far geographically from the likes of Shenzhen and Hong Kong. I think Wollaston's left the red. Fourteen. 
I didn't expect that one to go astray. We have 14. Had to play the cannon there, and it's worked out. Eight. Nine. Celebrates his 31st birthday in May, does Ben Wollaston. And a nice little kiss there would have been a really good early present. He got the kiss, but not the one he wanted. 16. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Well, if you're going to run out of position, that's the, the next best thing. That's the best way to exit the table. Considering the queuing, that was a really good reply from Lee. He has left a shot to nothing, mind you. Michael White showing great professional integrity. He's not rolling over. He's not being a pushover for Ricky Walden. He now leads by two frames to one. What? And I'll tell you what, after that, both Michael White and Ben Wollaston now, OK, they can't make the playoffs themselves, but they could have a, a big say in who does make the playoffs. I've been saying, correctly, that Wollaston's not had a good run in general in this group. But that was an outrageous fluke. That, though, was weak.
and we'll soon fall. Again, though, good snooker. And Lee Hang returns the compliment. I think he'll settle for that. Lee will retain the tactical initiative and with brown, blue and pink, indeed black down the spine of the table, should get a snooker again. Well, given the position of the colours, you get the feeling whoever pots the last red will more than likely win the frame. And that's why Lee is doing nothing outlandish. Biding his time, waiting for that opportunity to arise. What a fluke again! What a fluke! In his very first match here this week in Group 5, he had an outrageous fluke, fluke into that pocket actually, to start off a century which completed his 3-1 win over Mark Williams. They can be invaluable. The pink's rolled in. His lead goes to 14, so yellow, green, and brown required. Seven. No. Well, that was almost as lucky as the fluke. Using the blue to hold on the green. Lee hang, hanging his head, shaking it in disbelief. He might be a newcomer to the Championship League, but he knows how these round robins work and every frame priceless. Frame ball coming up. Sixteen. Twenty one. 
27 from the frame. After that frame, I would suggest that Ben Wollaston, on his way to the China Open qualifiers tomorrow, pops in to buy a lottery ticket. A couple of very opportune late flukes, particularly on the last red. That launched his clearance to pink. And Ben Wollaston playing for pride and, as we say, £100 a frame now. He can't make the playoffs. He can't stay in the tournament for Group 7. He leads Lee Hang by two frames to zero. They're really going hell for leather on the other table in comparison. Ricky Walden on a break of 79, so with only four reds left and therefore 59 on the table, he is going to pull level with Michael White at 2-2. Two -two. Wouldn't this be something? He was 2-1 down this morning in his first match against Lee Hang, 1-3-2. He was 2-1 down against Graham Dot. Ended up winning 3-2. 2-1 down here. If he gets another 3-2 verdict, he's into the semi-finals. Just wondering whether Walden is going to go on and make what would be the 12th century of this group. It will be the 77th in the tournament so far. No century. The red wouldn't squeeze by. But the job's done. Walden back on level terms. He's one frame away from a place in the playoffs. And there's still two more matches to come on at the conclusion of these two. Graham Dot yet to play Ben Wollaston, and then Lee Hang plays Martin Gould. Dot and Wollaston, Lee Hang and Martin Gould, both supposed to be on table one. But the way we do it on the second day of groups is that if a, a table is available, sometimes we have a switch and the way things have gone today especially with that rather slow morning session here on table one with a couple of three twos and drawn out three twos as well I think you might see Dot, Wollaston, Orley, Hang, Martin Gould actually switched onto table two It really has been a, a funny old group, players in form in spurts and then fortune and luck changing around. Ben Wollaston has found his lucky streak a little too late. Well, at least now he's avoided that record of fewest frames won in a group. Seven. A wobbler, but it's in. And Lee does have a marginal angle on the blue. Twelve. 
foot. And now he's got a very good angle on the black to go into them. Well, the reds spread nicely. The only problem, the black wasn't potted. That's the prerequisite. Sometimes in groups you see players start off brilliantly and then fizzle out. And I'm just wondering whether that's going to be the case with Lee Hang. Three. Eleven. Lives in the Leicester area, does Ben Wollaston, and so it's quite a, a short commute back home. A victory here would more than pay for the petrol money. It also covers costs up to Barnsley for the China Open qualifiers and a few other places as well. Twelve. And not all professional snooker players are in the high earning bracket with the likes of Trump and O'Sullivan and Selby and these guys. Many of them, the middle rank pros, have to watch the pennies and fight hard for everything they earn. But Wollaston there not able to cash in. Can tell you in the decider between Walden and White, Walden's opened the scoring with a break of 57. Oh, as Ben Wollaston knocks in a a cracker. Good angle on the yellow as well.
and Wilson 22. A good chance wasted. The position from the yellow wasn't good, was it? You have to say it. Four points for Lee. More importantly, a red has been knocked on. One good pot here could lead to useful things. Now that's always a sign of really good queuing, you know. He held that nicely, the cue ball, and with not a great amount of effort. It's got to take this frame by frame because even if he can't win the match, the odd frame or two could be vital. If you don't believe there's a, a big Chinese influence on the professional snooker tour now, I can tell you, you might change your mind if you know that in the China Open, forget the wild cards who come in out there, in the actual draw for the first round, over 20 Chinese players feature. Lee now 22 points to the good. And what's more, as he plays that one delightfully with the reverse screw back and side, 32. there's not an awkward ball on the table. There's a snag though, coming short of the blue.
and the consequence of one positional misjudgment. 38. There's another. So 33 in front, Lee. That means he needs the penultimate red plus a colour. And queuing from the side cushion, this is not easy. Thirty-nine. Technically there, that was exemplary. Delivered the cue straight, kept his head down. Well done. When they tot up everything at the end of the group, this could be a vital frame. We hung 44. Well, I can't believe he's missed that red. OK, he's 39 in front with 35 on the table. Ben Wollaston needs a snooker. And what's more, he finds himself in one, but that would have absolutely sealed it. And talking of sealing it, I can tell you that Ricky Walden, aided by that 57 break in the decider, has beaten Michael White 3-2. And so Walden into the playoffs. And do you see how quickly frames can change because of carelessness? Foul. Ben Wollaston four. Suddenly, Ben Wollaston, with a red, black and all the colours, can force a respotted black. How did Lee Hang miss that last red? Unforgivable. Maybe, though, it won't matter. <laughs> Taking extra care with this one. And it still proves elusive. Ben Wollaston can't believe he's still in the frame. This looks close. No, just a little wide. And although it's close to a pocket, even if Wollaston can get through to see it, position on the black is pie in the sky. Well, he couldn't get through anyway.
even missing the last red twice. Lee still looks pretty calm. Foul. Well, Wollaston needs a snooker now. Hang four. Free ball. And what's more, he's left a free ball. Pink ball. Off the pink and behind the brown, presumably. Well, it was a free shot the way he played it. Getting the snooker in behind the blue. Should the pink miss? It didn't. Well, his first frame is about to go on the board. We've seen a lot of comebacks today, 30. not least from Ricky Walden, who's won three matches 3-2 after being 2-1 down in all of them. Lee Hang 13 on the front. Is Lee going to get back into this contest? Well, he missed a few there. He made it hard work in the end, but he did get over the line. Ben Wollaston will have to wait for his first win of Group 6. He's still in front, but now the scoreline reads 2-1. So what do we know about Group 6 already? Well, we know that, unfortunately, Michael White and Ben Wollaston will not be hanging around for either the playoffs or for Group 7 in a couple of months' time. They will be eliminated. We know that Martin Gould, Judd Trump and Ricky Walden have made the semi-finals here later on. It's just a matter of whether Lee Hang will join them there, or whether it's going to be Graham Dot. Either way, Lee and Dot have the safety net of knowing, at the very worst, they're going to finish fifth and be invited back for Group 7. So Rob Spencer, diligent as always, puts the, the black on its spot. The pink is final task in resetting the balls and off we go for frame four. Ben Wilson to back.
try that. Caught an awful lot of the jaw. But the Brown helps Wollaston's cause. Little things like that make such a big difference in snooker, especially at this level. Now, what a nice pot that was. A whole succession of reds here making Lee's queuing not the best. And also limiting what he can do with the white. One of those extended bridges where he's got to get his hands right in the middle of the reds and then queue over a large number of them. Oof, he could not have wished for anything better than that. Just missing the brown. Lovely kiss on the red. Seven. Eight. Tough pot, but potentially big reward if he gets it. We've seen an awful lot of that. I don't know why in this group. On that kind of shot into both of these top pockets, if it's been missed, far more likely than not, it's because it's caught too much of the, the far jaw. Well short of the mark from Ben Wollaston. Life made slightly easier here by the fact that because he's got to take the cue ball in and out of bulk, the green being off its spot gives him a bigger gap. Good. 
the victory would be too late to save his bacon, but it would also earn him £300 and instill a little bit of lost confidence, maybe. 31. I think he has a red down to the green pocket. A victory, of course, for Ben Wollaston here would also do Graham Dot a great favour. Ben Wollaston, 38. Well, he made a 38 break in the opening frame, Wollaston. So that's his joint highest of a match in which, in terms of scoring, neither player has sparkled. Yes, if Lee Hang were to come back here and win this match, he would have four wins, and so Gould, Hang, Trump, Walden would all have four wins at that point, and the best that Dot could do would be three wins, so he wouldn't be able to make the semi-finals. if Lee were to lose this match then lose against Martin Gould and then Dot beats Ben Wollaston Dot could just about squeeze in Nice pot that. Well, again, having done the spade work, a ball that he should pot ends up still on the table. Oh. 
one. And really from here, Wollaston already 14 to the good now. Should be in for the kill. Should be, but then he plays a shot like that. Eight. to make eight from that well criminal And you know that Lee Hang will keep plugging away. Well. Superb. OK. The ball going in was undoubtedly a bonus because there was a lot of distance between the two reds concerned there. But... That was in his mind. He saw the possibility of that shot. Played it clearly with safety in mind. Took the, the cue ball back into bulk. Or at least near to bulk. And again, I'll say, he should be in for the kill. Thirty two the difference in favour of Wollaston, so red, black presumably, and then one more red. Eleven. Should be over now. A match that keeps the pot boiling in this round robin phase of Group Six. It's all too little, too late for Ben Wollaston. But he's shown a good attitude in this match. Played hard, not played brilliantly, but he's played hard and tried 100%. Ben Wollaston, 33, the frame in the match. Cheers, and the end result, Ben Wollaston from England beats Lee Hang from China by three frames sure. to one. So, two more matches to be played in this group coming up next here on table one Clive Everton